So what if you got an image to do similar to this on a big surface like this, but you know that you've got high spots and low spots everywhere. Uh, can be a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna show you what I did with this one. With this particular slab, I couldn't get it milled down perfectly flat and I don't have a machine to actually do that myself. So I had to do it with a hand sander, uh, an orbital sander exactly. Basically what that means is you're gonna get naturally some high spots and low spots where you sand. But the other thing is this is a very, very dense hardwood and uh, really, really hard to work with. So for example, in this one, I had a high spot here, which is on this particular point, uh, probably about, I think it was 0 0.4 millimeters lower. And this was actually a full millimeter lower than that point. And again, when we get to the text part, this point here measured two millimeters higher than this point. Yet if you look at the text, it looks pretty much identical across. So let's pretend for a second we haven't got anything engraved on here. Uh, the fact that we do kind of helps just to show you what the process is. Um, so obviously it would help to know where your engraving is going to be. So if you can just mark that out more or less, just to have a general idea. So the first thing to do is just find your first point of reference on your Z axis. And for that, we just pick a spot, a random spot. It doesn't really matter where. And then using the old paper trick, just wiggling that around while you're slowly, slowly lowering that Z axis until it grabs onto the paper. And as soon as it does, because this is our reference point or, or our starting point rather, we basically just go over to our screen and then just zero that Z axis. Right, so the next step would be just to find a new spot to test. Pick another random spot. It doesn't really matter so much where that is as long as it's not too close. So you get a little bit of a distance between the two spots so you can measure um, if there's any difference in height. So again, using the same trick, lower that Z axis until it grabs hold on the piece of paper. And if that spot happens to be higher than the previous one, that now becomes your next higher spot um, and your next starting point. So again, just zero that. And if it's lower, you just skip that one and continue finding the next highest spot. So looking from the side, this is basically what it looks like. You just lower your Z axis. And as soon as you get close to the surface, you slow down a bit, use the piece of paper and just wiggle that around until you find the point where the router bit touches the paper and grabs hold of it so you can't move it anymore. And then that becomes your next spot to check if it's higher or lower. If it's higher, you just zero it. If it's not, you just move on to the next point. So looking at this again, on my left hand side, I had the higher spot followed by the middle. And then on the right hand side was the lowest point. Okay, so here we are inside the curve and I quickly just want to run you through how I set this file up. Here you can see the tree that I've used and I'll just click on this to show you um, how I've grouped this together. So obviously we got the branches and the roots and then we got this, um, I don't know what you would call it, like a vein kind of graphic on the inside of the tree bark and the roots. Uh, not tree bark, the tree um, branches and the roots. And then we've got the leaves at the top and I haven't grouped those together and I'll show you why in a second. So first thing I did was to basically do the branches and the roots. So I'll just quickly click to this side and here you can see it's right there at the top. So if I double click on that, you'll notice right here at the top, I set a flat depth of 3.5 millimeters. So you, you're gonna get that V-carve look on the, on the sides, but the bottom side of this or the inside of this is gonna be flat. Um, the detail inside the tree, which is this graphic here, 
if I double click on that, you'll see what I've done is I've had a or set a start depth of 3.5 millimeters. The reason for that is if you remember now, I just showed you the tree itself has a flat depth of 3.5. So we're working off that flat depth and I'm doing a V-carve on that part. 3.5 millimeters and I'm not changing anything else. And then for the leaves, I'll just click on this. You can see I've selected all of them in one go and that was the first path I did. And I started on this side and one thing to remember is, or a tip rather, is when you get your zero on your Z axis this side, just lift it ever so slightly higher than the actual starting depth because that kind of gives you like a margin of error. So for example, if you measured all over the place and you found that this is the highest spot, but you missed something, say for example, right here, and this part is actually the highest point, having it a little bit higher here means that when you eventually get to this part here, you're not gonna lose so much detail because you can always uh, lower your z-axis again and run the same toolpath and then get better detail as you go down until you are satisfied with what you are getting. So on the first path, this is what it looked like. I took a photo and brought this back to my computer so I can do a second selection of leaves to carve. So as you can see right here at the top, uh, it didn't engrave as well and a bit also on the right hand side. So what I've done was then come back in here and I've, I'll just make like a rough selection like this. Now obviously you're gonna select the branches and everything else so you don't want that. Um, and all you have to do is basically just press shift and click on it. And now you just got some uh, tree leaves selected. And I'll just zoom in a little bit so we can see better. Right, there we go. Now, obviously, some of these will be fine and you don't want to engrave them again. And then again, same thing, you just press uh, Shift and click on the ones that you do not want to engrave. So you'll end up with something like this. Then I'll go ahead and create another toolpath from uh, this selection. And then starting um, point would be, I don't know, let's say, for example, you measured this is your highest point for this section. So again, I'll put my Z axis to zero on this and then lift it slightly higher, do the carve, see what it looks like. And if you need to, lower it again, very, very little, and then run it again until you are happy with what you are getting overall. And then you basically just repeat the process. And that's what I've done on this side as well. So select it, deselect what you don't want, and away you go. And if I quickly just select everything I'll con I can show you, it's supposed to take roughly three hours uh, to do this whole sign. But it took me nearly six and a half, almost seven hours in total to do. So definitely a longer process, but it is so worth it, especially if you've got um, a slab like this that's basically something you can't replace, you can't mess it up, so you need to do it right from the start. I hope this helps. I know somebody out there is going to have the same issue and not know how to do this. So hopefully this is uh, clear enough and it, and it helps you out. If you have any other ways of doing this or if you know of a better way of doing this, then please shout out and let us know so everybody can learn something new. And I um, appreciate your viewing this and I'll catch you on the next one.